Over the past few months, artificial intelligence has managed to create award-winning art, pass the bar exam, and even diagnose illnesses better than some doctors. But as AI grows more sophisticated and popular, the voices warning against the potential dangers are growing louder. Italy has become the first Western nation to temporarily ban the AI tool ChatGPT over data privacy concerns, and more European countries are expected to follow suit. Here at home, President Biden met yesterday with a team of science and tech advisors on the issue and said tech companies must ensure their AI products are safe for consumers. We're joined now by Seth Dobrin, president of the Responsible AI Institute and former global chief artificial intelligence officer for IBM. It's great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeff. I really appreciate it. And most people, when they think of AI, they're thinking of Siri on their cell phones. They're thinking of Alexa or the Google Assistant. What kind of advanced AI technology are we talking about here? What can it do? Yeah, so what we're talking about here is primarily technology called large language models or foundational models. These are very, very large models that are trained essentially on the whole of the internet. Uh, and that's the promise as well as the scary thing about them is, you know, the internet basically reflects human behavior, human, you know, human norms, the good, the bad about us, and the AI is trained on that same information. And so, for instance, uh, OpenAI, which is the company that built ChatGPT, which most everyone in the world is aware of at this point. There are a few who still yeah, aren't. Yeah, there's a few who still aren't, yeah. Uh, but it was trained on Reddit, right, which from a content perspective is really not where I would pick, but from a how do you train a machine to understand how humans converse, it's great. Uh, and so, you know, it's, it's pulling the good and the bad from the internet, and it does this in a because way... Because we should say Reddit is like a chat site. Yeah, yeah, Reddit is a chat site, and, you know, you get all these bad conversations going on in things called subreddits, and, and so uh, there's a lot of hate, there's a lot of misogyny, there's a lot of racism that's, that's in the various subreddits, if you will. Um, and if you think about uh, what, it's ultimately what it's ultimately doing, it's essentially, think of it as autocomplete, but on a lot of steroids, because hmm. uh, all it's doing is it's predicting what's going to happen next based on what you put into it. Well, the concerns about the potential risks are so great that more than 1,000 tech leaders and academics wrote this letter recently, as you know, calling for a temporary halt of advanced AI development. And part of it reads this way, recent months have seen AI labs locked in an out of control race to develop and deploy ever more powerful digital minds that no one not even their creators can understand, predict, or reliably control. What is happening in the industry that is causing that kind of alarm? So, you know, I think, I think there is some concern, to be honest. Uh, you know, the, this technology was, was let out of the bag. Uh, it was put into the wild in a way that any human can use it in the form of a conversational interface, chat, GPT. The same technology has been out available for a AI engineers and data scientists, which are the professionals and, and that work in this field, for a number of years now. Uh, but it's been in a what's called a closed beta, meaning only approved people could get access to it. In that controlled environment, it was good because OpenAI and others, OpenAI makes ChatGPT, uh, and others were able to interact with it and learn and give them feedback, like things like you know when the first one came out. You could put in what is Seth Dobrin's social security number, and it would give it to you, wow. right? Uh, or my, you know, what is every address Seth ever lived at, and it would give it to you. It doesn't do that anymore, but these are the kinds of things that, in the closed environment, could could be controlled. Now, putting this out in the wild is, you know, there's been lots of, you know, pick your own metaphor, right? Your your your, your own nihilistic metaphor. Uh, you know, it's like giving people ever the world uranium and not teaching them how to build a nuclear reactor, or giving them a bio agent and not teaching them about how to control it. It's, it's really that, can be that scary, um, but there are some things that companies can do and should do to, to get it under control. Like what? So I think, um, you know, if you look at what the EU is doing, though they have an AI regulation that's regulating outcomes. So anything that you know, impacts health, wealth, or livelihood of a human should be regulated. Uh, there's also, so I'm president of the Responsible AI Institute. What we do is we build, so the letter also calls for tools to assess these things. That's what we do, that we, we are a nonprofit and we build tools that align to global standards. So some of your viewers have probably heard of ISO standards or CE, you have CE stamp or UL stamp on every light bulb you ever look mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. We build standards for, or we build ways to align or conform to standards for AI. Uh, and they're applicable to these types of AI as well. But what's important, and this gets to the heart of the letter as well, is we don't try and understand what the model is doing. 
we measure the outcome. Because quite honestly, if you or I are getting a mortgage, we don't care if the model is biased. What we care is, is the outcome biased, right? We don't necessarily need the model explained. We need to understand why a decision was made. And it's typically the interaction between the AI and the human that mm. drives that, and not just the AI and not just the human. We have about 30 seconds left. It strikes me that the industry is going to have to police itself because this technology adva is advancing so quickly that governments can't keep pace with the legislation and the regulations required. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's, it's not much different than we saw with social media, right? I mean, I think if you were to bring Sam Altman to Congress, probably get about as good a response as, as, as uh, Mark uh, Zuckerberg did, right? The Congress people need to really educate themselves. If we as citizens of the U.S. and of the world really think this is something that we want the governments to regulate, we need to make that a ballot box issue uh, and not some of these other things that we're voting on that I think are, are less impactful. Seth Dobrin, thanks so much for your insights and for coming in. It's good yeah, to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeff. Really appreciate it.